chapter 11 in this text, I've already prayed, protocol has been established. I just want to get right into tonight's teaching. Worth preaching. Numbers chapter 11, we are dealing, watch this, with the Israelites. They are in the wilderness and they are doing what they do best and that is complaining. They are complaining because they feel like God has brought them out there and now he has forgotten about them. Have you ever been in a place where God brought you from something but then you got there and felt like God forgot about you? See, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to warm up so y'all don't have to catch me. But, but have you ever been in a position where you felt like, God, we are crying out to you but I'm not receiving no answers. I ain't got a phone call, text, email, nothing. God, are you even listening to me? Oh, God. Bible says they're out there and they are complaining and they're saying, you know, I remember when we were in bondage. It seems like I had more to eat when I was doing the wrong thing than I have now that I'm doing the right thing. I, go, I ain't got no help in here. I ain't got no help in here. And so we find ourselves in the text. We find the Israelites complaining and now Moses is hearing this complaining. But see, in verse 1, the Bible tells us, watch this, that the people complain and it displeased God. Yes, yeah. All right. yes, yes. They were complaining so much, Emmanuel, that God got mad and the Bible says that I'm yelling. I'm hollering in the car. The Bible says good word. the Lord heard it and his anger was aroused so the fire of the Lord began to burn them on the outskirts. Uh -huh. That means, watch this, back then, the Lord was so disgusted by your complaining that he ended your life. You didn't get a second chance to complain next Sunday. You didn't get a second chance to complain next week. The Lord said, all right, you don't appreciate what I did, you ungrateful soul. Let me go and call you all home. What would happen if the Lord started calling roll based on your complaints? Wow. to me how we forget that the same God that all right Bible says he's the same yesterday today and forever yes sir but some kind of way you think God changes with your situation you tend to think that God can't do it this time because this situation is worse than last time but I want to argue that the only reason he let the situation get worse is because he had the answer Come on. Come, on. Come, on. Come on. Come on. Tells them. He starts killing them. When they find out they've been killed, verse 2 says they go to Moses. Mm -hmm. They go to Moses whining and crying. Moses, they tell Moses, all right, God killing us. Who going to feed us? Said, because we remember. We ain't real good when we was in Egypt. <laughs> Come on. All right, some of y'all talk to me and, and, and look oh, straight ahead. Don't look, I don't want nobody thinking you're telling your testimony. Oh, but you know, before you got saved, some of the evil <laughs> stuff you did, you had more money. Before. Oh, okay. All right. It, it was easier for you to get money before you found Christ. Then, all, all right, y'all not talking. All right, every hustler in here ought to say amen, Pastor. Because I know how easy I can make a phone call and have every but my integrity and character would have been compromised and I, I find myself sometimes, y'all not talking to me here I find myself complaining saying God you know if this was back in the day I find myself giving glory to my past because I know my past would have got me paid I know how I, God, I can make a phone call and have all this stuff you talk Right now, I need you to understand. See, y'all don't talk to God like this, but I do. No, Lord, I need you to understand struggling is a choice now. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Because I can make a phone. Come on, I can make a Facebook post and get this bill. All right, y'all not talking to me here. I can make a Facebook Live video and get this bill paid. I can send one text message. Y'all not talking to me here. I can send one text message and have all this cleared up. Yes, sir. Talk about it, And the people started complaining, saying, we remember when Come on. we were in bondage, but we ate better. My God. Wow. And they said, everything is dried up, but this <coughs> manna. manna. My God. Come on. Now, those of you who do your homework, you like word study, you understand that manna has no definition because manna means what is it? 
What is it? What is it? It just means what is it? Watch this. Through through further breakdown of the definition of manna, we find that manna, manna also, there's another root word in manna, and that word means it, it has three different meanings, but one of the meanings means when and how long. Watch this. Because what they have was what had been sustaining them for 40 years. Watch this, and this is for my first point. What do you do when you're no longer satisfied with what used to sustain you? My God. My God. Sir. What do you do when God paying your bills ain't good enough for you no more? Wow. Wow. Come on. I want to deal with my first point, son. It's called a preventative attitude. Uh-huh. Works up. Because some of us, the reason God can't do what he needs to do in our life is because our attitude ain't right. Y'all not talking to me here. Amen. Some of you, watch this, you try to have a good praise with a bad attitude, but to do the right thing with the wrong attitude is still wrong. Yeah. Y'all not talking to me here because it's not what you do, it's the attitude in which you do it with. Yeah. Yeah. Bible says that the people started complaining yeah. because they were receiving manna, and, and, and watch this, it, it, it wasn't good to them no more. It was good when they was hungry. Right. No yeah. It was good when they were starving and didn't know, but you're still starving, and now what used to satisfy you ain't good enough. Uh-huh. Your attitude ain't changed, but you want your access to. Wow. 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 Mm, Work. Come on. They Come on. are complaining. Complaining, who gonna feed us? Who gonna pay my bills this month? Who gonna hire me this month? Who gonna do this? Lord, you blessed me with this job, but these people getting on my nerves. But it wasn't even about the people getting on your nerves. It was about the Lord trying to teach you how to fix your attitude and shut up sometimes. But because you don't know how to shut up, you feel like you got to say what you got to say and you got to tell somebody off. You you will always be going from job to job. Because I'm going to give you this for three people who love good teaching. The reason some of you can't get what you want because you can't be faithful with what you don't like. Because the Bible says if you're faithful over few, he'll make you ruler over many. But you're trying to get to rulership when you can't even have good faithfulness. So, I don't like everybody at my job. I ain't asked you to like them. I asked you to do what they hired you to do. No discipline. My Lord. And it amazes to me, it amazes me, Pastor Lewis, how we try to hold humans to a standard that we don't want God to hold us to. Working here. They 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 better not treat me wrong, but you do God like it. I told him on Sunday, I said, how dare you walk in somebody's house and don't speak? And they'd be like, they better not walk in my house and don't speak. But y'all come to church and won't talk to God. Not only will you come to church and not speak, but you, you want a blessing. So not only do you come in the house, you go in the refrigerator. Because in the refrigerator, you find food. Food gives you something. To, y'all not talking to me here. So what you do, you come to church and try to go in God's refrigerator to get substance to live. And you ain't even spoke yet. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them the people, people are mad. And Moses, watch this. Because the people are mad. Now Moses is complaining. Moses is saying, now look, God. I'm leading all these people, and they complain. Mm-hmm. And right now, I don't have an answer for them. Uh-huh. Because catch this, oftentimes when you have to lead people, frustration is a, is a part of the entire process. Yes, right. Let me help y'all understand something so y'all can really get inside pastor's head. Very rarely do we preach and not be frustrated about something. I know you're right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, I know you're right. We're frustrated almost every single sermon. Amen. Uh-huh. Every single sermon. Watch this. Because the people that say they love us are the ones who don't treat us right. Come on now. Y'all not talking to me. All right. The people that say they love us will be the ones that text me 30 minutes before service and say, Pastor, I ain't coming. Now you have vexed my whole spirit. Come down and people want to talk to you about something. 
something that can wait. Yes. Mm. But they say, Pastor, but we love you. No, you don't love me because you keep adding unnecessary burdens. You gotta say that. Uh, Moses is mad because he has an assignment and he know God called him to do it, but the people are complaining because they are selfish. Yeah. Oh Lord. God has been sustaining them for 40 years. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And they still selfish. Still, still selfish. Mm. How dare you tell me I'm accurate, but you don't listen. Oh, my God. <laughs> How dare you brag about me to other people, but you don't listen. Come on, man. Talk about That's like, that, watch this. That's like me inviting you out to eat, but not feeding you. Right. Now, I want you to come eat with me, but I'm not going to feed you. I just want you to sit there. Wow. And watch me. Wow. Wow. I'm going to talk about you, but I ain't going to obey you. Wow. <laughs> it's an insult. Yes, it, is. it makes Watch this. It makes you fake to tell other people how great your pastor is and you're not obedient. All right. Oh my God. All right. Pastor Four Wheeler, that's my pastor. Y'all better not say nothing about my pastor. All right, Ooh. they can't talk about me. I need you in church at 830. You come walk in at 10 o'clock every day. Wow. I love you, but you know, I, I, I can't I can't get up that early. Mm. You can't? So you're going to blow it. Because I know you're going to work that early. Amen. And if you got kids, I know they got to be in school that early. So why, you can't, why can't you get up that early? No, just tell me the truth. You don't want to get up that early. And that's fine. Hear me, hear me, hear me. That's fine if you don't want to. But don't expect close miracles with a distant discipline. Because I don't think it's fair. I, I don't think it's fair for those of us who are faithful to get the same blessing as the unfaithful. Talk about it. I don't think that's fair. It's not. And I know God reigns on the just as well as the unjust, but we ain't talking about his reign. We're talking about his reward. <laughs> I just don't think it's fair that if I got to get up early, Make sure my clothes is ironed the night yeah. before come on, and come to church come and be in position, in position that the person who just drags in gets the same title as me. Uh -huh. oh my God. Yes, sir. I don't think it's fair that if I got a tie and be faithful, come you can come in and give an excuse why you can't tie and get the same order as me. I don't think that's fair. I just don't think it's fair. Amen. And, and, and the funny thing is, funny thing is, the ones who do the most complaining are oftentimes the least faithful. That's right. That's right. They complain more than anybody. That's right about it. But you cause more problems than the people you complain about. Because what you don't realize is your complaining is a problem. It's amazing to me how people can see what you as the pastor need to do right. more than they can see what they as the person are. Oh, y'all not talking to me here. I don't understand where you got the anointing to counsel your leader. Pastor, let me tell you what you need to do. You can't tell me nothing. Pastor, I think if you put them, no, I might need to put you out. Because anytime you think you can counsel a leader, watch this, that you can't be the teacher and the student at the same time. If I'm the teacher, you're the student, you either comply or find another church. But you can't do what my sister said, you can't transmit and receive at the same time. It just can't happen. Because if we both on the walkie-talkie trying to talk at the same time, neither one of us is hearing anything. The Moses, yeah, yeah. Moses started complaining. I'm almost done. Moses started complaining because Emmanuel, the people he was assigned to serve, was tap dancing on his last nerve. And Moses goes to God and says in verse 14, "All right, Lord, you can kill me, and and and, and you, you, ain't, you ain't a real pastor." Unless you have asked God to fire you before. <laughs> no, no, come, y pastors, y'all talk to me. You ain't a real pastor until you done, oh, hey God, I, 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 listen, I know somebody you can trade places with me with. I don't mind. 
mind, God. I, I can sit in the back, pay my tithe. No, I ain't got to preach, pray, prophesy, or do nothing. Lord, you can, if it be, let this cup pass. I don't mind. I get excited when the Lord said he's raising up somebody else. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, because I can just get in the background. Thank you. And the Lord be like, no, come on up to me. Moses says, God, where in the world am I going to get all this meat to feed these people? See, that's one of the frustrations you, us as leaders have. Because when y'all start coming to us with your prayers about the situations that you are dealing with, and, and you want us to give you clarity, and you want us to give you answers, sometimes we have to wait before we respond. Because we're like, God, they have all this stuff going on. And watch this. How? Because as pastors, we don't just think about the spiritual side. We think about the natural side. So you can't tell me your lights is on, and I don't automatically get a burden to try to help you turn them back on. Now, even watch this. And, and we get burns for you even when you weren't faithful. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're like, okay, God, I need a miracle. And the Lord say, you, you, you want me to bless somebody who ain't faithful? I say, well, Lord, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just the pastor. I'm just asking God if you could find it in your heart <laughs> to bless them. And maybe if you bless them this time, Lord, they, they'll be faithful. And, 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 and the Lord blesses them only for you to realize they ain't faithful. All right, all right. And, 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 and those of us who have real hearts, we take it personal. That's right. Like, Lord, as much as I poured into them, how come they ain't get it? Yeah. And the Lord told me one day, he said, stop blaming it on yourself. He said, it ain't that they ain't faithful to you. They ain't faithful to me. That's right. And I would be out of order to expect you to be more faithful to me than you are to God. He says, they're just not faithful, so it's okay. I said, but Lord, they pray like they're faithful. Huh. Mm -hmm. they, they even shout like they're faithful sometimes. They even speak in one of them tongues like they're faithful sometimes. Wow. I can tell that it don't be you, but I, I mean, at least they try. And sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. You know? You, I, I mean, heaven can't interpret that tongue, but at least you try. <laughs> wow. And I realized that as Moseses of our generation, oftentimes we find ourselves complaining because we as leaders take up on too much of the burden. Amen. That's right. The Lord told me one day, Pastor Lewis, and it scared me. The Lord said, I need you to let them fail. I said, Lord, that ain't my heart as a pastor. Mm -hmm. I said, you ain't even wired me to let people fail. I said, I'm a solutionist. I'm a strategist. So when people are around me, I'm automatically picking answers and business I did. That's right, baby. Preach your uncle. I'm, 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 I'm picking strategies. I'm, I'm doing that. And, and, and the Lord said, no, let them fail. I said, Lord, if I let them fail, I said, some of them may fall off. He said, I don't care. Let them fail. I said, why? He said, because if you never let them fail, they will never learn to value the leader I put in their life. That's right. He said, if you don't ever, watch this, there are some people that have offended you that God won't deal with because you won't stop praying for them. Wow. 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 So it's not that God is blessing them, God is honoring you. Wow. That's right. God, my God. So some people, you need to say, Lord, be in your hands. <laughs> because the longer you pray for him, the longer it's going to take for him to deal with them. Because watch this, he don't value them, he honors you. That's right. There are some people that God wouldn't touch until I told him, God, I take my hand off of them. And I started watching their life fall apart. And it was, I wasn't happy to see it, but I knew in order for them to understand who I was in their life, they need to see what their life is like without me. Right. Right. Which means I had to ignore some phone calls. I had to unfriend and hide. Because I needed them to know. Watch this. I told my wife the other day. I said sometimes as a leader, you've got to be prepared to be offended by people who don't see you. Because Jesus went to the cross saying, forgive them for they know not what they do. They didn't even know who I was. Had they known who I was, they never would have did what they did. So I gotta be mature enough to take the offense and still not hold it against me. Come on, come on, come on. Kinda hard to expect a fool to treat you like a prince when all they know is fools. That's right. So they have to watch this. So they have to be in the presence of a prince 
in order to watch this offend the prince enough to make the prince put them away so they can see what their life is like with that kingdom in it. My God. Wow. Oh, my God. Help me. Yeah. Because maybe when they were, all right, all right, y'all don't, let's, okay, okay. Uh, there was a group of, pro, a school of the prophets. Y'all don't remember them. They, they was out in the, in the late 80s, um, in the 80s and the early 90s. There was a school of the prophets, and, and the, the, the name of the, the group was Boys to Men. It was school of the prophets. They were prophetic. I'll tell you why they were prophetic. They were prophetic because they sung a song that said, uh, let's don't wait till the water runs dry and make the biggest mistake of our lives because some people watch this don't realize the water that you bring to their life until you decide to dry up wow. Wow. they don't even realize what your words mean to them until they no longer have it they don't realize that when they picked up the phone and got advice from their pastor how God was sending answers until you stop uh, stop, stop answering their call Oh, yes, sir. I had somebody text my wife and said, Mama, I, if I can still call you that, this is how the conversation Word, Mama, you? If I can still call you that, I really wish I still had you in my corner. Because it's hard being around people and you don't know who to trust. And here's the problem when you had us in your corner, you mishandled us. And now you realize. The people that you mishandled were your wow. answers the whole time. Wow. Wow. But 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 it, it took life for you to realize I can't pick up the phone and call my answer no more. Come on. My so Lord. now I'm going through life in the dark trying to figure it out when I had somebody who had a flashlight. Wow. But because when they had a flashlight, they, the flashlight was so that they could see further than where I was because they had the ability to see my tomorrow and they were dealing with my tomorrow while I kept getting frustrated about today. And so now, in the text, I'm trying to, son, I'm trying to be done. They had a preventative attitude. The people complained. They were foolish. Moses started complaining because of frustration, but then God's consequence, he consumed them with the fire. Because it's an insult to God to complain to him like you knew him. It's an insult to God to complain to him as if he don't know what you're dealing with as if he did not allow you to deal with what you're dealing with. And oftentimes, many of us who complain, we complain because we are flat out selfish. Mm. I know y'all don't want to talk, I know y'all don't want to admit it. Y'all ain't got to admit it, it's fine, it's fine. You got pride, but pride cometh before fall. I got you, but some of us are so selfish. That's right, talk about it, that's right. All you pray about is you. Everything is about how God gonna bless you and how you want God to bless you. But the Bible I read says that he turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Come on. He gave him back double, not when he was praying for himself, but when he started praying for others. Because oftentimes we 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 act like God just now caught wind of what we were going through. Sir. You, you act like when you prayed it, that's when he found out. Not knowing that the Bible, y'all talk to me here. If y'all want Bible, let's go. Bible says he knows your thoughts. Hey, glory. Far off. That's what he said. Yeah. Matter of fact, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you. Come on. And, and, and later on in the text, it tells you to bring you, watch this, to an expected. Watch this now. Now, wait, wait a minute. Now, you can't read. You can't walk through that and, and act like you didn't just say what you just said. Because he said it's an expected end, which means the end has already been predetermined. So all he's trying to do is get you to maneuver and get in the right position to get to the expected end. But for some reason, your expected behind wants unexpected trouble. Some of us find it hard to live 
live a life of peace. Because drama keeps us alive. Come on in here. Some of you, peace would make you feel unwanted. My Lord. You can't have peace. Because, watch this, you've been caught up in drama so long that when people when people try to put peace in your life, you think they're trying to be funny. Wow. <laughs> what you mean, what, what you mean, what you mean, Pastor? What you mean? I, 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 I love you. All right, well, Pastor, but you, you're not fussing at me. I got to fuss at you to prove to you I love you? Mm -hmm. My Lord. What if I told you that some of you are so used to being abused wow. <laughs> that when someone takes care of you, you feel like they have a hidden agenda Come because on. you only value the abuser. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You feel like the abuser loves you because they keep giving you attention. Yeah. Watch this. And even though it's negative attention, it's still attention. And you're an attention seeker. And so when somebody loves you, says, I'm not going to argue with you, you have to create an argument because you don't feel like they can love you unless they're mishandling you. Come on, Come on, man. Sir. Help us. Talk to don't feel like you love me because you ain't talking. You ain't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't saying nothing to me. I'm going to work it here. Because I don't have to entertain you. Yeah. I talk when I got something to say. Come on, preach up. You ain't called me in three weeks. Because if we really friends, I shouldn't have to. You know what I relate. You know what it is. That's right. That's right. God, ain't nothing going on in my life. My God. I'm, am I in trouble? God, are you, maybe God, God you done broke up with me because I don't feel warfare. I don't feel, I ain't, I'm just kind of in a place called in between. Talk, sir. I'm, I'm in a transitional place and I don't know how to, I don't know if I'm supposed to cry or am I supposed to shout. I, 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 don't, I don't know. And watch this. So subconsciously, you start looking yes. for drama. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Y'all know, watch this, yeah, watch this, watch this. Uh, some of you, you don't, you're not on social media because you like being on social media. You're on social media because it feeds your gossip spirit. Well, my God. Oh, my God. Mm. No, 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 because some of you don't even post. You read everybody else's right. timeline. So you know what's going on in everybody else's life. And it feeds that side of you that needs constant drama. Come on, you helping us? It feeds that side of you that says something got to be going on that I can get involved in. I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. The Lord said some of you, some of you crave drama so much, you involve yourself in other people's drama just to get your fix. My God. What do you mean? You'll see two people arguing on Facebook and find a reason to jump in the argument. Ain't got nothing to do with you. They ain't talking to you. They ain't saying nothing to you. But just because you need some type of drama going on in your life, you will involve in somebody else's argument and then be mad when you get mishandled in it. You talking right, sir. There's some things I see on Facebook right. I don't like, but I don't comment on it. My wife, my wife gave me a quick prophecy and I've been using it ever since. She said the reason I don't get involved in that because it's not my monkey, not my circus. Ha! I said, girl, you've been with God. <laughs> not your monkey and it's not your circus. <laughs> See, I used to say, if it don't affect my faith, family, or finances, it don't matter. Right. Right. But I like that it's not my, I, I ain't got no dog in that fight. <laughs> but some of us, we need trouble to live. So what we do is, we add a dog to the fight. Come on. Come on. And Come on. Then get mad when people mistreat you or mishandle you, but you involved yourself in something that had nothing to do with you. Watch this. You, you invited yourself to an illegal attack. Wow. Come on. You invited that to you. Like I told people, I said, I said, see, some of this stuff that we call deliverance and casting out demons, these folks don't know what they're doing. They, just, they think they're knowing, and they don't know jack. 
They, you, you can't even cast out a demon until you figure out what demon you cast out. Come on. It kills me how people just start. I cast a demon out of you. What demon are you talking to? I, I don't know. We just we plead. you you can't cast out if you don't know who you're talking to. Come on. I found out that what happens is when you start when you start trying to cast out a spirit that's not even present, instead of you casting it out, you invite it to the party. Because you could be dealing with unforgiveness, but you're trying to cast out uh, rape and all of that stuff, and now you didn't invite the spirit. They, they, hey, somebody called my name up on earth. I gotta go figure out what's going on. Because because we try to function being charismatic exercises. You think you think just because you got an unction, you got oil. Yeah. Come on, Dad. Let me help you. Just because you got an unction, don't mean you got the oil for it. I'm gonna say it one more time. Just because you got an unction, don't mean you got the oil for it. I could want to arrest somebody, but I, I I can't legally arrest nobody. I could I could want to kill a few people, but I can't legally. Kill nobody. Right. Come on. I could I could want to assassinate a clown, but I can't legally <laughs> kill a clown. Fool around and kill a legitimate clown. <laughs> they messed up. Listen. Am I boring y'all? Let, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Watch this. Come on, They had a preventative attitude, but then number two, there was the prophet's assignment. Because when God gets ready to do something great. In a people, he, the Bible says he will do nothing in the earth without first revealing it to his prophets. Yes, sir. That's what he said. And so he gives the prophet an assignment and he tells the prophet, go find 70 people that you know to be elders. Yes, yes sir. He says, got to find the elders of the people. Mm-hmm. And officers over them, bring them to the tabernacle meeting that they may stand with you, number one. He had to find some servants. Yes, sir. Come on. When we talk about servants, we're not talking about glorified flunkies. That's not what we're talking about. When we're talking about servants, we're talking about people who have the heart of the leader. Yes, we are talking about people who are servants at heart, not selfish people. We're talking about servants, people who don't mind helping other people, people who have a passion for other people. It amazes me how so many church folks say, I just want to help other people, but you can't even help the person sitting next to you. Y'all not talking to me here. You want to help other people so you can get accolades and kudos and cookie and brownie points, but when it comes to your neighbor sitting on your left or your neighbor sitting on your right, you ain't got nothing to say. You don't want to talk to them. Y'all not talking to me here. You being iffy and messy and saying you got God how you gonna help the world and can't even help your house? My God. I'm gonna say this, y'all not gonna like it, but it's fine, but I mean I'm out there now. Speak it, Dad. Come on, sir. Anything that you do outside of the house that is better than what you do in the house is out of order. Yes, it is. If we throw a party. And y'all don't put streamers on the wall and balloons and hire a DJ, but you throw a party at your house and you do all that, you out of order. Uh, Amen. All right. See, I knew y'all wasn't gonna like it because I said, I heard you talking, but that's my house. Yeah, but this is where you eat. That's right. You better speak, Dad. My God. That's right. Amen. 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 If you can't come to church because you want to watch Empire, that's fine. I'm all for it. But when you need a breakthrough, you better call Cookie and Lucius. Don't call me. Because catch this. If that voice can keep you from here, then they are your pastors. That's right. That's right. Because I'm not going to fight a full-time devil for part-time members. That's what I'm not going to do. Because they had to be servants. Had to be able to serve the people. Because let me help you. You ain't anointed if you don't have the respect of the people you serve with. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not anointed because I'm, I'm, I can prophesy and I'm gifted. I'm anointed because the people I co-labor with respect me. Because I serve them. 
I'm anointed because I serve my father. I'm anointed because I serve my brothers and sisters in the gospel. Let me give you this though. It don't mean I like all of them, but I serve them. All right. All right. All right. Because true service ain't based on your attitude. All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Y'all messy and ratchet. You ever went to a restaurant? Y'all, no, no, because I hear y'all talking. You ever went to a restaurant and, and the person in the window gave you attitude and you want to tell her, I didn't ask you to go pop for this job. Amen. Watch this. You don't even care about her attitude. You just want another self. I don't care what you got going on. Just make sure my fries is hot. You ever went to the window and they give you attitude? And you looking at the huh? Walk to the window, can I take y'all? Is that it? Is that it? You want to drive around the window and slap the taste out of your mouth. Oh, you got an attitude. Who made you come to work? I didn't make you get that job. I don't pay your salary. Watch this. You don't even care about the attitude. You just won't. You're fool. And some of us can't serve right because our attitude dictates the service. Yes, sir. That's good. I'm going to serve good today because I got paid and I'm in a good mood. So I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be on time because I got to show out. And I can tell somebody that got on my nerves. Pastor better not say nothing to me today. I don't, bro, I don't want to prophesy. He better not say nothing. Matter of fact, I'm going to sit in the back. I'm going to sit in the back and act like I'm a witch and disrupt the whole atmosphere. I want everybody to see how upset I am. And then when they ask me what's wrong, I'm going to tell them nothing. You a witch. So I'm going to sit back here and, let, and, and cast a spell over the whole atmosphere. But one thing you got to understand is I don't run for witches. Witches run for me. I keep on preaching like you ain't even sitting there. I'll be like, oh, you a witch? Hey, witch, how you doing? Da, 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 da. Go to wiggle your nose because we're going to be watching me witch flag at home. Because Come on. we're trying to use our attitude to determine. How we serve. This is thing. good, preacher. Good. They had to be servants, but then number two, they had to be able to stand. I have a problem with the people who can only stand when you win. Wow. Have a problem with people who only want to pass out flies to the church when I'm getting on their good side. Oh. Have a problem with people. Who the moment the pastor start going through warfare, they disappear, get distant. <laughs> what if I told you that some of the hits you're taking is confirmation that you're in the right place? Because the enemy never attacks what's not a threat. So maybe your connection is a threat to the enemy. That's why he attacks when you got in position. Because his job is to, watch this, I, I know y'all think the enemy is trying to pull you out of church. Stop lying to yourself. The devil ain't trying to pull you out of church. He's trying to make you break up with yourself while you're in church. So he don't mind you going to church. He don't want church to be of any effect to you. And that's what the enemy does. The enemy says, no, you can go to church. You can be close to your pastor. But I'm going to show you that none of that means nothing because I really have control over your life. Which means I'm going to jack your life up while you're close to the pastor. Y'all not talking to me here. I'm going to jack your life up while you serving, while you sowing. I'm going to keep checking your life up because you think it's about your closeness. But it's really about your salvation. So it says, so it says they had to be able to stand, which means they had to be able, they had to, it had to be proven that they could stand the test of time. That means regardless of what came, they were able to stand. They say, I got this, I'm here. Pastor, it don't matter. Thank y'all for coming. I love y'all. They had to be able to stand through all the warfare. People will stand with you when it's sunny. But where y'all at when it rains? Where we at when it rains? All right now. Where we at? When I don't feel like preaching. Uh, why can't why how how can you stand next to me and you can't pick me up in the spirit at all? That's right now. That's right. Uh -huh. Pastor, right. some don't some don't feel right. You alright? I can text my father right now and be like, Dad, something ain't right. I, I, I can't I I'm not your leader, so God don't show me everything. I'm submitted, but he will tell me when there's a disturbance in the fourth. He will tell my spinal sense will start tingling. <laughs> Some ain't right, Pop. He'll say, son, just pray. That's my confirmation that I'm on. That's right. That's right. I have a problem with people who say, Pastor, we love you. 
but you don't ever pick me up in the spirit. All right. All right. You should be able to pick up something. I'm not saying you got to be my prophet, but you should be able to pick up something. That's right. That's right. There should be something that disturbs your spirit to be like, Pastor, look, something ain't right. I feel it. I don't know what it is. Something ain't right. And whether I tell you or not, you need to know. No, I'm connected for real. That's right. So I know, Pastor. You may not tell me, but I know. And then I know how to pray. That's right. That's right. Sometimes you got to know how to pray without me having to open my mouth and tell you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He said, they got to be service, they got to be able to stand. But then, number number three, they had to have the spirit of the living. 652, give me eight minutes, I'm close. They had to have the spirit of the leader. Now, my church, y'all know what we classify spirit as, and that is what? Attitude, move, and response. That's what we classify as attitude. He said, God tells them, catch this. He says, I'm not going to put my spirit upon you. Can I read the text? Yes, he tells Moses, he says, I'm going to take the spirit that's on you and put it on them. And I said, Lord, I said, what's the, the biggest difference? Because spirit, the Bible already says we are is one spirit, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. That's the text I read, Jaleen. That's what I read. So what's the difference between your spirit and Moses did. The Lord said, keep reading. And he says, he says, watch this. He says, in verse 17, then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it by yourself. He said, that's the difference. I said, what do you mean? He said, we've been trying to impart the wrong spirit to the people who are assigned to serve in our vision. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, they need my spirit to be saved. They need your spirit to serve the vision. Come on. And, and the problem is you don't want to give them your spirit because you've been giving them my spirit. But here's the problem. When they get my spirit and don't have yours, then they get unctions. They try to override the vision you set it out. Come on now. Come on, sir. Help us, God. Because then they start walking around saying, I, I'm telling you what God is saying in this house. You can't say what God is saying in this house because God ain't talking to you like that about this house. Because you ain't the, you ain't the presiding prophet of this. Y'all not talking about this house. You don't get to see further than me in my own house. You're right. 